Last week, SAP introduced this uh, pipeline concept about handling SAP cloud integration. Um, and this is a way to decouple the processing of business logic from the routing of messages, a lot like we already have in the PI system. And this is somewhat of a replicating of this. It obviously makes sense for migration purposes where you would be able to see something similar in, in a way that is being processed here. Uh, you can find the documentation and everything and we'll link to this in the in the description. Um, that's a lot of benefits and I think the one of the main thing is you want to decouple the, the processing and enable the processing to be a lot leaner and um, yeah, decouple, yeah, decouple and move error handling from business logic flows into a more generic scenario instead of having all the error handling locally, which I think just adds a lot of complexity to building the flows if you add all local error handling. And obviously, there's also limitations on the uh, queues you can use, etc. So there's a lot of benefits with it. Um, and yeah, it, but it does obviously give some complexity uh, for it. Right now, it's just a lot of uh, API calls that you need to do to work with these scenarios. Uh, let's see if uh, it should be possible to automate this and enable you to automate it, the deployment and governance around this, because that is something that definitely is needed for you to run this. Okay, let's get started. So to get started, um, I have created this uh, blog post here that you would see, and you can see in the show note. Um, the first thing you obviously need to go in, is into your discovery center here on your tenant. Here you need to search for this process integration templates, add it to your tenant. And if we go to our tenant, we have already defined this one. There's a lot of stuff. <laughs> And what you can then see in here is you have a number of different artifacts. You should deploy this uh, script collection and uh, two, three, four, five, and six. There's some other ones that we will not be covering in this uh, scenario. So they have created some templates that would show you some of the different scenarios for this. Okay, one of the other things that is relevant for this is you need some business logic flows. We have created a package um, that you can also download in this uh, blog post series. Uh, da, 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 da. Let me be able to search. So here we have this flows. Here's three flows. One is a demo endpoint that you can configure how many times it should fail. Uh, so there is a configure option here to specify how often it should fail. We have two business flows. These are migrated using the the VGAF tool. We have just used our simple templates here and then replaced the endpoints to process direct to be able to simplify the setup and not requiring too many other details for this. Um, and we also have a, another one. Okay. Then we have just created a simple HTTP iFlow also um, to handle this processing. So this is, as I see it, you would create a number of different pipeline one steps depending on the different scenarios that you would be using um, for these things. Anyway, once you've done that uh, and deployed all of this, you we have created this uh, Bruno collection and here you can I'll just clean up. Um, you can clean up some of these uh, requests, and then the idea is that you will go in, uh, log in with with this. We've already done that, and then you can set up all of the different artifacts required for this. Uh, so you just select run here, which creates this. So there's one here that's just a header parameter that we set how many max retries it should have. We have some XSLCs and the way we have defined these is a value that's binary. And then it is using this process ID receiver determination and a binary value that we have defined over here. And here we have just taken these um, style sheets 
run them through a base 64 bit uh, base 64 conversion um, and then pasted this value in here and this is probably part of the things that you want to automate and, and make sure is a part of your transport processes once you've done that we rerun this i guess i did run it um i'm like we can always run again it'll just give up errors if there is duplicate so it's bad request anyway that's just duplicate that's fine good the next thing is we want to run these messages so let's just click here select run and obviously you should also configure the partner uh, or the the environment with your api keys and message processing keys and host names etc for these things once this is done we should be able to see some messages that has been processed on the system um and what you'll then be able to see is we can see here the the iflow here uh, that has been triggered so we can see here 09 the, the inbound was processed and we had receiver determination that found these two receivers we had an interface that processed that gave for this specific one and we had one for the other partner we were using one of the endpoints failed a simulation error occurred that's okay um then that one was being reprocessed you can see which partner it is the message type etc so we can see here um these in, in different information that is being processed on we can also here in the figaf tool sometimes that's a little easier to see some of these messages and obviously you could create a a tile that was specific designed for this value so here we can see these partners that is being processed and just process another message let's see if it's easier the receiver identifiers here and then we have the endpoint that is being triggered to give some uh, information about whether or not this failed etc so it does give a lot of capabilities you can implement it into your migration processes um, and it is fairly simple uh, to get started with and understand what it can do, do. Uh, we also try to use it with the migration tooling uh, the test tool that we have and here we are able to create some test cases um, and one of the things we added recently was the ability to act, actually have one incoming message and then subsequent outgoing flows. And that means that once we process the message here, we will trigger it and then we will be looking at all the resulting iFlows from here and we can see the results of these scenarios and we can see whether or not it is uh, successful or not. And obviously, uh, because we have a different error percentage, it may cause a few problems here and stuff like that. But we can see some of, of this is successful, which is good. Um, we can see the name of the iFlow, um, etc. So this gives us a lot of capability to handle such scenarios. Um, yes, you can find the guide, you can find the Bruno collection, you can find the sample package and get started here. I hope you want to try it out and see how it works. Obviously, you should experiment with your own scenarios, but I hope this will give you a head start and enable you to get started a little faster exploring what the capabilities are of this uh, scenario. I hope you like this video. Please uh, hit like, please uh, share it with your colleagues that are also need to understand these scenarios. Thank you.